You're telling me that kid from the Sixth Sense may have been onto something. That's crazy. Stick around to find out more. That's crazy. The Western world had a unique relationship with death in the 1800s. With mortality rates for children under five sitting above 40% in the middle of the century, death was commonplace, but no less heartbreaking. In Victorian England specifically, many died quickly and died of injuries and infections modern medicine has since helped abolish. Victorians invented elaborate grieving rituals to give meaning to their loved ones' short-lived lives. All of this was happening at the same time as advances in photography led to the prevalence of post-mortem photos, where Victorians would haul out their dead, prop them up on stands, and commission a picture worth a thousand words. These stands helped corpse look alive and allowed them to pose with their still-breathing family members. Or so the story goes. Fake post-mortem photos, whether categorized in error or intentionally mislabeled to sell for a profit, have in recent years become widespread on the internet. They fill online galleries of Victorian oddities and accumulate on Pinterest and Instagram. Even otherwise reputable websites have contributed to the myths. Though unfortunate, it's also understandable. There's clearly something compelling about a lurid, not-so-distant culture engaging with death in a way that we don't. In truth, the propped-up people in Victorian postmortems look alive for a much simpler reason. Because they are. Posing stands were used to help living models hold still for that era's longer exposures, though even that is misleading. Long exposures is a deceiving term, says Mike Zahn, a longtime photographer and the owner of Obscura Antiquities in New York. Initially, he explains, exposure time could be half an hour or an hour, but this was for landscapes, never for portraiture. By 1839, when the daguerreotype was invented, the longest exposures were a minute and a half. By the 1850s, they were three to eight seconds. When people talk about long exposure, it sounds like people had to wait for half an hour, Zahn says. They did not. But an exposure of even one second is long enough to allow for blurring. So, they had posing stands. According to the website Viral Nova, they also had posable corpse arms. In a post ostensibly showing Victorian post-mortem photos, number eight on the list is an image that has been passed around many corners of the internet. Viral Nova quotes the photo source as Tumblr. In it, a man reclines in a chair his face resting on his hand. Notice the way the photographer has positioned the man's arms in order to support the head, the author asks. The photo is actually of author Lewis Carroll, taken years before he died. Other so-called post-mortems are often assumed to be of dead people because something seems spooky, too stiff posture, unnatural looking eyes, or eerie shadows can easily start a photo's post-mortem career. And much of this supposed evidence is, again, just evidence of an older photography system. Earlier chemical processes made colors appear differently. Blue eyes could come out as white, and exposure might leave limbs dark in order to make the face clear. Posing stands, Zahn explains, are similar to microphone and guitar stands. Though they're made of cast iron, they're not particularly sturdy or heavy, weighing perhaps 20 or 25 pounds. More damningly, they're not counterbalanced. They weren't made for or sturdy enough to actually hold up the weight of a dead body, Zahn says. If you set a corpse, rigor mortis would have needed to set in just the right way. On a posing stand, it would certainly topple over. You can read the actual words of the people who invented the stands and how they were used, he says. You can read the actual words of people who are photographers and giving first-hand accounts, as well as the accounts of people who are having their photo taken. We have the catalogs. We have the illustrations. We have every bit of proof that someone could need. A 2009 film called The Haunting in Connecticut shows perfectly how a good story spreads with a little help. 
The film's post-mortem photos appeared Victorian, but were taken specifically for production to prevent moviegoers from contacting the studio and demanding money, claiming to be the descendants of the people in the photos. The same thing happened with post-mortems that did with tear catchers, says Christian Harding, owner of the Belfry Oddities store in Seattle. People want to create a fake history and to believe it. They also want to profit from it. Postmortems earn a pretty penny on both eBay and Etsy, and the majority of collectors are not going to consult a patent library before clicking the Buy It Now button. Even worse, the more misinformation there is online, the likelier it is that someone's research will turn up myths rather than facts. Tell us what you think. Did you buy into the fallacy that people living in the Victorian era posed with the deceased before laying them in their final resting place? Did you think something wasn't quite right about these photographs making their way all over the internet? Or did you know it was a hoax all along? Let us know in the comments section. Please be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to ensure you never miss out on all the great videos coming your way. Till next time, I'm Rick James, asking you to keep it crazy.